So marcasite is uh, iron sulfide, much like pyrite, however it's a different mineral than pyrite because it doesn't have the same crystal structure. So marcasite is, I think, quite interesting because it comes in different forms and has plenty of weird shapes as you'll see later in the video. And it's also rare enough to be at least a bit challenging to find. The plan was really quite simple. We would cycle down the coast from Belgium all the way to the place where I knew it was possible to find these stones. Et la belle somme c'est pas par là. Ah non <rire> Heading towards some french fries. I think we've deserved them quite well. Despite the fact that we've just met with a guy who told us that uh, we were not actually going in the right direction. So right now we're going towards a place uh, that people have told us would be good for us to sleep because, well, as usual, pretty much uh, we were talking with some people there at the French fries place and these people were a bit scared about the fact that we would be camping somewhere around here they said uh, it wasn't very safe Camille says that she understood the directions so I hope that's true and I hope we don't end up somewhere in the middle of nowhere That evening we planted our tent in a patch of fairly remote and wild meadow. Maybe a bit too wild actually, because it seems like in the middle of the night we attracted the attention of some curious roe deer. Indeed, at some point we were both woken up by a Wah! At first we thought it was a dog or someone who had gotten much too close to our tent for our own safety. But after that we heard some galloping sounds and we figured out that it was probably just some kind of roe deer who had gotten a little bit too close to our tent and had probably scared himself. In the morning, we decided to make a stop in the bakery just to ask to fill our bottle of water. After chatting with the baker for a little bit, she decided to give us two croissants for free just because she thought what we did was kind of cool. So thanks to her for lifting our spirits when we were feeling a little bit tired already from pedaling under the sun all morning. However, things were about to get quite a bit worse for our morale. Indeed, the wind picked up and we soon found ourselves cycling against the wind that apparently reached speeds of up to 35 kilometers an hour or 18 knots. After 25 or so very difficult kilometers, we found ourselves in a little cafe called Le Café des Dunes. People in it were very nice, possibly helped by the fact that I had had a few pints of beer already. A few guys complimented me on how huge my legs looked, which is really hilarious because my legs are very thin. I mean, I'm not actually a muscular guy at all. Um, I think this really just shows just how intense the effort was, that my legs were still swollen from the effort. At some point, one guy wanted to exchange his t-shirt with me, uh, but he quickly realized that my t-shirt was full of sweat. And while I saw his face, I had the courtesy to tell him to forget about our little deal. So anyway, they were very nice and they soon pointed us to some nice places to which we could go and soon enough we were back on the road.
So this is probably where we're going to camp. It's a nice little place where I'm kind of sheltered from the wind, which is going to be a nice thing after a day like today. And the view is really nice. The place where we were this morning was called Cape White Nose, and that obviously was because of the um, large chalk cliffs which were, well, white, hence the name. However, this place is called Cape Grey Nose, and Camille and I were kind of wondering why. So I came here to have a closer look and it seems like this is all kind of clay and stuff like that. And also sandstone down there maybe. Um, so that kind of answers that question. Uh, I think, yeah, you can see fossils and that sort of thing all over the place. So that's quite interesting. So we just stumbled upon this man who sells things and amongst the things that he sells he has these beautiful fossils which he says he found in the cliffs that I just showed you so yeah so that has to be the greasiest my hair has been in a while and my hands are disgusting especially this one that's covered in like bike grease and that sort of thing and other than that we're both covered in uh, sun cream and that sort of thing so yeah we feel absolutely disgusting today, uh, rightfully so. Oh, and also, of course, sweat, because, of course, we've been sweating all day long. Uh, but the good thing is we can have some showers here on the beach. There's a beach somewhere down there. The guy who had showed us his fossil collection had, as is usual pretty much, chimed in with an opinion on where we should sleep that night. He had suggested that we slept near a lighthouse, which according to him offered a really nice view of the bay. However, as we approached said lighthouse, we started to have the idea that maybe this lighthouse would attract a lot of people, including a lot of youth from the area. So, since we didn't really want to be bothered during the night or anything, we talked about our problems to a random couple who happened to be walking just next to us. And upon hearing our situation, they simply offered for us to stay at their place and plant our tent in their garden. Okay, so Camille has just left and uh, so we've exchanged bikes because my bike I think was not very good so there you go, I've got only her bike and I've given her my backpack so uh, in there there should be a sleeping bag and a tent so that should be enough to survive a couple of days 
So I think I'm going to try to aim um, more or less towards the south. I was thinking about going back to the coast, but the thing is right now where, I mean, I am quite far from the coast and I don't really want to, you know, go perpendicular to the coast because that would be a huge waste of time. So I think I'm just going to go, you know, pretty much directly south and see what happens. Um, maybe tomorrow we can start finding, I mean, looking for these uh, rocks that I would like to find. But uh, yeah, who knows? Let's go. Okay, so first problem. This bloody key is of course not the right size to actually um, fit in here. So I can't really put the saddle any higher than it is right now, which is a bit annoying because it's really low. Oh man, I'm glad I just went to uh, ring that bell because, so that lady was really nice. I mean, first she, she looked a little bit um, bothered by my presence, but in the end she was really nice and she kept asking questions. But more importantly, she gave me a um, hexagonal key so that I could put my saddle higher. So now it's actually the right height. And I can tell you that really makes a difference. I've just finished climbing this hill and it already really helps. Also, she gave me a new bottle of water, full of water. So that's really nice. So I've made some pretty decent progress because um, basically after this place where I asked for a tool uh, it was all fairly downhill so that was quite nice and also Gami's bike is quite nice um, to ride but, um, we're quite far still from the bed some although I will say one thing and that is that I've just passed a sign that says that we are in the département de Somme so that's quite nice um, other than that, I have a slight problem, which is that my phone is uh, running low on battery and I've lost a cable to charge it. So, uh, yeah, I, I might have to uh, use my camera. So, I was following a uh, cycling route there, which apparently took me to Le Crotois. Except, for some reason, it seems to be going pretty much straight east. I think it's going to take me through one of those little coastal towns or whatever. And uh, yeah, I'm not really interested in that right now because this place is actually quite nice, so I don't mind cycling through this. Okay, so this is a bit awkward, but the sun is in my back now, so I don't really know what that says about my orienteering skills or the fact that I will be actually able to reach uh, Le Cotroi tonight, but I think this means we at least have to take a ride soon. So this is where I'll be staying tonight. So of course I didn't make it to Le Cotois, but I'm still only 10 kilometers from Le Cotois, so that's not too bad. But yeah, I'm just a little bit tired, so I thought, well, I might as well just enjoy the sun and put my feet up, which I have just done. Okay, so I, I had this bark lying around and that is actually quite dry and it's very thin too so I'm gonna hope that works as tinder. Just gonna stick that there.
Hi everyone, so it's like 4 in the morning right now um, and I really couldn't sleep, I don't know why so I decided to pack up and just, you know, leave so right now I'm cycling on those tiny little roads in the countryside and it's actually quite nice because, I mean, you really can't see on the camera but the sky is super clear so you can see all the stars, there's hardly any light pollution and uh, I can actually see quite well, despite the fact that it is currently 4 in the morning. I have really no way of knowing where I'm going because, uh, well, I don't have a phone anymore. So I've been trying to navigate um, following the stars, sort of, because I thought, um, when I left basically, I thought I knew where I was. I mean, I thought I knew more or less where my camp was facing, so I thought, okay, let's just pick a constellation or something like that and that means that is west but turns out I am probably wrong because now of course the sun I mean I can start, start to see the sun kind of uh, rising and it is rising right beneath the constellation that I chose so that means the constellation was east instead of west which meant that I've probably been going north instead of south which is absolutely not what I wanted to do Despite the early morning hours, I was able to cover quite the distance in a fairly short amount of time. Of course, at the time, I had absolutely no way of knowing what time it was. So, when I arrived at the foot of the cliffs that had been the goal of my journey all along, I asked some random people what time it was, and they told me it was not even 10 in the morning. This really shows just how much more distance Camille and I could have covered had I not had a crappy bike. So I've actually been here before, um, when I was a kid, and this is where I remember finding these marcosite nodules. I mean, yeah, honestly, my, my memory is a bit fuzzy, but I think this is the right place. Okay, that's interesting. What is that? Mm. No, it doesn't really look like marcosite. No, that's just a piece of random junk. Unfortunate. Now, the thing is, marcosite, of course, being um, quite rich in iron, is quite heavy. So I don't think I'm actually going to find it here amongst these pebbles. But instead, I should probably look around um, in those crevices over here, because basically it's a bit like, you know, a gold sluice or something like that, where um, gold is heavier and so it kind of gets trapped in the grooves of the gold sluice. Here's a piece that looks very interesting. All right, I think that's it. It's extremely heavy. Uh, I could break it open. That would really confirm that it is marcosite instantly. And there you have it. That is marcosite. Okay, cool. Interesting. Interesting shape, but um, yeah, that is marcosite. Here's another interesting piece. But that's really interesting because it feels like marcosite, but it looks like there's um, it's kind of been fossilized maybe, because that looks kind of like uh, sea urchin markings or something like that. Fossilized marcosites, is that even possible? All right, well, I've really hit the model load here. Look at that. That's another really cool piece. That's definitely marcosite too. I remember finding pieces like that. And right here might be another piece. Yep, that looks like marcosite too. So let's just quickly break this one open because it's not super interesting on the outside, but 
on the inside, it might be pretty cool. Mm, not the nicest specimen I've ever seen, but it kind of looks interesting anyway. After filling my pockets with enough marcasite to sink a small ship, it was time for me to go back home. To do this, I had to cycle all the way back to a town where I would take the train to Brussels, at least in theory. So this trip might not have actually reached its end yet. Uh, quite a lot of things happened between yesterday when I was in the train and now. I didn't really film anything because I didn't really think it would make for an interesting story to tell. But as things are developing, I'm, I well started filming again because I thought it would be maybe interesting in the end. So yesterday I was in the train and I was supposed to get off in a little town somewhere in France and then take another train to go towards Belgium but I of course completely and utterly missed my stop and instead of being like closer towards Belgium I had actually continued much further south towards Paris so yeah just like that basically when I realized that my hopes of actually making it back home were completely and utterly annihilated uh, but I do have family in Paris, which is nice um, because now I was actually quite close to Paris. So I ended up going to see my family and see my mother, which was quite nice. Then I had to take a train to Brussels from Paris. So there you go. I did find the marker site, which is nice. Um, quite happy because I did find some pretty interesting samples too. I think my favorite would definitely be this kind of fossilized sea urchin, um, at least I think it's a sea urchin, maybe someone can correct me, but I'm fairly certain it is. And yeah, it's, it's really peculiar because you can definitely see this this kind of fossilized animal in the marker site, which is really not something that I knew was possible, but apparently there you go. Also, well, of course, you know, as I mentioned several times already, and what I do like about marker site is the way that it comes in several different shapes and forms and that sort of thing with different kind of crystals. So it's time to choose a sample to put in the in the periodic table of elements and I think I'm going to choose actually uh, I mean it's hard to choose from all of these great samples especially you know since they all have pretty cool shapes and all that but I think I'm going to go for the sea urchin. So here you've got some pieces that I found uh, well, just a few days ago, and these right here on the right are the ones that I found when I was around 11 or something like that. So yeah, they do look pretty cool too, as you can see. Now this one, this one is, I mean, it's quite tarnished, but you can really see how crystals kind of radiate from the center and form these kind of nodules. Um, and this one, unfortunately, I mean, it looks interesting, but unfortunately it's kind of been um, tarnished and it started decomposing because of humidity 